produced by Victoire. Victoire gives a special thanks to the EWF, Empire Wrestling Federation, and Mr. Jesse Hernandez, as well as SoCal Wrestling TV. Find the app on Roku. Hello, fans, and welcome back to another episode of Stylin' the Podcast. This is part two of the Vince McMahon special. I am your host, Emir, along with uh, Rico. Well, well, he's meant to be here. Uh, Rico, are you there? Okay, hold on. Let me see here. I just spoke with him a few minutes ago, folks. I know he's been uh, running around today, but uh, Rico, hold on a sec here. Let me see if I can track him down. No, nope, straight to voicemail. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I don't know, folks. I mean, Rico was meant to be here today. Um, you know, oh, oh. Oh, Rico, God. where were you? I almost panicked there because we're, sp- we're supposed to be running a oh, show. Wow. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Oh. oh, I'm sorry I'm late. Where, where oh, my gosh. You? What well, happened, uh, man? Uh, I got an emergency call from the wind. The Cirque du Soleil had a fashion faux pas. Oh. And I had to run to the wind Hotel and fix because got a show tonight. Oh. So, I mean, I couldn't even take the Cadillac. I had to get in the 5.0 Mustang and just bust it. Man, really? I, I think I bent a few speed limit laws. Yeah. But, yeah, I had to get over there real quick, fix okay. what they had because they got a show. Yeah, everything oh, show. everything handled? You got everything? Under- I got everything handled. You know, I had yeah. to get uh, dressed up and... Yeah. You know, a little yeah. professional and yeah. and really, you know, help them out. You know, they were they were in trouble. Yeah. They probably wouldn't have gone on tonight if I didn't show up. Lucky I was in Vegas. Gosh, can you imagine that, folks? If Rico had not been in Vegas today, Cirque du Soleil, a historical performance would not have happened tonight. Rico, congratulations. And, you know, I think Cirque, Cirque du Soleil urges you uh, a lot of wow. things. Wow. Right I'm telling you, boy, I was running, you yeah. know, and. Yeah. You know, I live in my Chateau Rico in, yep. you know, Henderson and yep. Cirque du Soleil's downtown on the strip. Gosh, you know, that's a while. Yeah. But uh, this goes to show you, you can never stop styling. You no. Know? Hence the you name got, of the yeah. podcast. Always yeah. got to be styling. You guys got to be yeah. ready to make make them up. But Rico. Yeah. I got to tell you, I made some homemade pink lemonade. I got to I got to rehydrate. Woo. Oh, you've got to rehydrate. I invite everybody to join us. In fact, I've got a nice decaf tea right here. Cheers to my Cheers. co-host uh, right here, Rico Constantino. Um, everybody, grab a beverage. Uh, yeah, join come us. Come sit and talk. Come sit and talk with us as we go through the Vince McMahon Netflix special part two. But before we begin, what would look great to us? Rico? Oh. Well, it would look great if you slay that smack down on that subscribe button. Indeed. That's not a request. You lay the smack down on that button. Lay the smack down on that button. Like this video. Share it. Tell all your friends about styling the podcast. Because Rico Constantino and myself, Emir, said so. But anyway, <laughs> on to the Vince McMahon special, my friend. Wow. Yeah. What a series. This is part two. We watched episode three, four, and five, and what a series of revelations that were. They were. But uh, Rico, you and I did chat a little bit about it off camera, and you did mention something about the production itself, how in your interpretation, it was not another party coming at Vince, that it looked like something that had been produced in-house. Maybe elaborate a little bit more on that. But you told well, me. Well, I've seen exposés, and this didn't hit me as an expose. I mean, what happened happened was regular news. He was just addressing it through the through Netflix, mm-hmm. you know. And, and one time, I believe he was getting asked a question, and since I've been in, you know, this is a shoot statement, you know, many gunfights in fifteen years of law enforcement, my hearing you know, is impaired a little, you know, because you don't have time to put earplugs in when you get in an air uh, gunfight. Yeah. You don't as a bodyguard, you know, oh, hold on. Let me put my earmuffs on and then start fighting. Mm-hmm. Bang. That first shot, your ears are ringing. Yeah. So I use the closed caption. 
on top of the noise, you know, the volume to watch stuff, movies. I don't care what it is. I have to use closed caption. And when the closed caption came in, uh, Vince was getting asked a question when he was sitting in the ring and the word Bruce Pritchard came up and I went, all right, this is not an independent reporter mm -hmm. digging. He's got his friends asking him questions mm -hmm. that he's going to answer so calmly. Yeah. So that struck me as odd. Yeah. And before we go any further, Rico, for those fans who may not be aware, Rico has been in law enforcement. He has been a police officer. He has been a bodyguard because there are going to be some other topics we're going to be discussing later in the show where those skills and that knowledge that Rico has come into play big time as it, as it involves Vince McMahon. Um, yeah, definitely Bruce Pitch Pritchard, who is Vince McMahon's right-hand man. He's been there for a number of years, uh, was definitely picking him up. But then he had every reason to, because we he had that moment where he talked about Vince helping his wife, who had cancer, uh, over 20 years ago. They'd given her... Yeah. Yeah. So, But I'll that just you. solidifies what I told you, what Vince did for me, and he mm -hmm. didn't have to. You know, he let, he flew me home, got me the best doctor, best physical therapist, and he was under no obligation. Mm -hmm. So there is a side events like that. And mm -hmm. as Bruce said, his poor wife had a four year expectancy to live. But mm -hmm. Vince made sure she got the best care, best doctors. And this is 24 years now. Yeah. She's a cancer survivor because yeah. Vince did the right thing, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's commendable. That really is. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying he earns an, a wing or a halo, but, mm -hmm. you know, he did the right thing. Yeah. Just like I told everybody before I knew this, he did the right thing with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I think there's definitely something to that. We as human beings, we are all flawed. OK, some end up flying far more than others. That's just the case. That's the way it is. But we are in a constant tussle between. Oh, I see you're uh, you're heating Woo! up. Rika. What's happening? Yeah, I, I, I was running here, like I won't say the mile per hour, but I was yeah. bending a few speed limit laws. Well, that's a, at, least, at least you're on the inside. You can possibly yeah. go. <laughs> Why don't you take why don't you take your jacket off? Get comfortable, Rika. You hot? Oh, yeah, I, I should. I should get yeah. comfortable because yeah. we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about, folks. We're just getting ready. In fact, to take this opportunity to have a sip of whatever beverage you're consuming right now. This tea is delicious, Rico. I have a decaf vanilla. I think there's figs in this, uh, figs, dates, all kind of other good stuff in this. Ah. A little better? Woo, I got the fan going. <sighs> okay. Another one of the Rico ring-worn shirts right there, everybody. Right here. Ring-worn, right the whole thing. Yep. Ring-worn. And your, your wristbands as well, ring-worn? Of course. Fantastic. Okay. First topic on the agenda then, Owen Hart. I thought I would give Owen a spotlight in this episode, Rico, because uh, that documentary brought up that tragedy once again, um, oh. something that can't be forgotten. But certainly no. Owen had a personality and a character that can't be forgotten either. But you brought to my attention after we watched it um, uh, something that I would like for you to share about Owen in that moment. Um, so uh, if you will, Rico. Well, I was still uh, in developmental territory. I was watching it live mm. at home uh, with then my wife. And all of a sudden, like I said, the interview was playing. And then somebody said, Owen's already in the ring. Well, he didn't do his entrance like it was supposed to. That's why he fell. The manufacturer harness malfunctioned. And uh, like I said, when King left... And then he came back. I know that look from law enforcement. And I told my wife at that time, I said, Owen died. He's dead before Jr. announced it. Because being 15 years law enforcement, the worst thing that you have to do is go deliver a death notice. Mm -hmm. Like somebody in Vegas, you know, or somewhere else, they call Vegas and you go there with the, the chaplain of the department or the crisis psychologist slash psychiatrist 
and you give a death notice, you know, you lost a loved one in this state. We're here to inform you, yeah. you know, or welfare check where you have to go knock and because the pay, people who are family are somewhere else and they asked you to do a welfare check on a person. And there was a lot of times when I would knock and then we'd have to break open the door or get the manager to open the door. And the person was deceased in the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, those are very hard things to do. Mm -hmm. uh, delivering death notices or finding somebody who is expired, mm -hmm. you know, and in Las Vegas, it's not pretty, mm -hmm. uh, especially during the summer, mm -hmm. you know, um, but like I said, so I know the look mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then later on, JR came on and said that, oh, when it died, but nobody in the back could hear that, mm -hmm. you know, only the audience heard it. Yeah. So, um, now the way I got told is Owen did a couple of practice runs and it went well, but he never did it in full costume. Mm -hmm. And I heard he went up there in the Cape and all that. And I guess he was hooked in. I guess the Cape wasn't in the right position. He pulled the Cape, but it released him mm -hmm. and he was on the way down. And Jimmy Corderas told me himself, he was in that corner. And on the way down, Owen yelled, he had enough sense, a composure to go, look, say something like, look out, get out of the way. I don't know what the exact words was, but Corderas moved. Mm -hmm. And Owen hit the buckle and down he went. So that situation could have been two fatalities or two horrible career ending injuries mm -hmm. but owen i believe is a hero mm -hmm. because he knew what was going to happen to him and he saved jimmy corderas mm -hmm. i mean he had enough sense that he knew he was free falling and he yelled out to jimmy to move yeah, yeah. uh i don't think a lot of people know that no. so in my mind owen hart is a hero mm -hmm. he knew his fate but he saved a life. Yeah, yeah, he really did, and that's how I think of Owen Hart—a yeah. hero. No, definitely. And I never knew that until you and I spoke about that. Um, you know, and Jimmy Corderas—that was the referee for anybody who isn't familiar. It was the referee during that match. Um, obviously, some decisions were made after that, Rico. Uh, again, you and I talked about that, and we looked at both sides. You know, Vince decided to carry on with the show, as he said in the documentary. Um, you know, for me, as 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 not as a ruthless businessman as Vince McMahon is, you know, I I I thought that the way he said, okay, you know, we carry on with this and sweep it aside, that was a little harsh for me. But that's me. But then again, we've got to understand Vince McMahon's in charge of a billion dollar company, and I'm not condoning what he said, because I'm sure some people were very upset by the way he addressed it, but he did, as you said, what he thought was best. And maybe explain that a little bit, Rico, for the fans, because you mentioned something to be me about the circus. So maybe explain that. Well, I did some research on it and there's always been a coined phrase. The show must go on mm -hmm. and they can't say who started it or PT Barnum or Bailey or what circus, but it was in the 1800s. And the ringmaster who was running the show, if an animal got loose and stuff like that, they'd have people that could take care of it. And the ringmaster would go, the show must go on. Yeah. You know, and that's in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. So what, not defending Vince, mm -hmm. I, I think he could have handled it better, mm -hmm. but I think he was under that mentality. You know, the show must go on. Mm -hmm. These fans are here to see a show. Yeah. But his excuse was, well, it was dark. Nobody saw what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, afterwards, you see paramedics and everybody working on Owen and they wheel him off yeah. and they wheel him in front of the talent. Yeah. You know, uh, my personal, I think Vince should have, because he knows who's going to wrestle, mm -hmm. should have taken a break, got all the wrestlers together. And then inform them that Owen had passed mm -hmm. and say, if you don't want to wrestle, I understand because everybody goes to a pay-per-view, mm -hmm. everybody. So he could have, and we're, we're that talented. We could make a match on the fly. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, I believe an opportunity should have been given to those wrestlers at that time, whether they could perform or not. Because when they went out there, they didn't know whether Owen was dead or not. They just saw him go away in an ambulance. Yeah. You know, and they went out, you know, and as the documentary said, they were getting pushed out the gorilla box. You're on, you're on, you're on. Yeah. So I think he meant well, but I don't think he went the right way of doing it Mm -hmm. because the next night he went to all the performers and he asked them, do you want to do the show? And every one of them said, we're dedicating this show to Owen Hart. Yeah. So they all went out in respect and love for Owen. Mm -hmm. They were given a choice. I believe they should have been given a choice on Mm pay-per-view. But it's still, it's still good that they were given the choice. They didn't cover that in the documentary about the next night about being given a choice, but I'm glad to hear that they were Uh, one of the individuals that still suffers greatly from the loss is Jeff Jarrett. Um, I saw an interview with him for AEW a few months ago and he's still, he's still in tears when he talks about it. He they and were partners, they were a tag team. Very close. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know. It, you know, the tragedies that befell the Hart family were extensive around that. Yes. Time. I think the yeah. very next year, the British Bulldog died. British Bulldog died, died in his pool. Yep. Um, you so know, um, Pillman the year before or a couple of years yep. before that. A couple of years before. Yep. yep. So, um, yeah, very, very tragic. But, uh, yeah, we wanted to take that moment just to, again, remember Owen Hart. Um, yeah. it is featured in the thumbnail there and give him some respect. Like I said, a, a hero, you know, in the eyes of yeah. Rico and yeah. Yeah. He died a hero. Um, I just, to have that mindset, knew where he's headed to warn Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. To take that time. So, um, that was part of the attitude era. Right. For our next our next conversation. So the attitude era, there there's mixed opinions about that. Some people loved it, some people hated it, some people were indifferent. Um, what first of all, what were your thoughts? Actually, let's just say if you didn't know the business and you were a fan at the time, because you grew up with watching wrestling in the 80s, so you remember what the golden era was like. What was the attitude era like for you as a fan? Shocking. It was they would push the envelope all the way to the line and then over the line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a shock factor. They, they got away with whatever they could. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and we talked about this before. I didn't see it in the documentary, but gang grail and the brood, mm-hmm. you know, Christian edge when they bloodbath people. Yep. I mean, my gosh, that is, yeah, you know that that's shocking. They pour well, but the, you know, could been uh, Hollywood blood, but I don't know if it was blood, blood, but it looked like blood. And people yeah. got lights went out. Gangrel yeah. had fangs. The old Dracula yeah. colonial shirt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, that's a shot. I mean, that's that's taking it, yeah, right to the edge. I tell you what, will be a shock for you, Rico. So I saw an interview with Vince Russo. Now, Mm -hmm. this was just posted a few days ago because he was commenting on the Vince McMahon documentary. And he stated there that uh, he didn't have anything to do with any certain angles or something that he didn't write certain things. But wasn't he the head writer for WWE all through the Attitude Era? Correct me if I'm wrong. It was just him, correct? I came in the Attitude ending, Ruthless Aggression beginning. Okay. And creative never helped me. Okay. You know, because like I said, Vince didn't want me to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I just came up with ideas myself and I would talk to the road agent, Mm -hmm. whether it was Pat Patterson, Dean Malenko, Fit Finley, Rip, uh, Michael P. Hayes, you know, people like that. And they would help me with the matches. But as far as creative, Mm -hmm. taking an interest in me, no. Okay. Because I didn't know who wrote. Okay. All right. We'll have to try and dig a little bit deeper into that and maybe ask uh, Vince to come on our show, actually, because it confused me a little bit because he was saying how he was defending himself, saying I would never put women in those sorts of storylines. But yet I do recall him being the head writer for WWE at the time. And you talk about the bloodbath. He repeated that in WCW. I remember a segment with Kevin Nash where I think blood came down because there was the angle with the new 
and it New came blood, down yeah. and, and it covered him. So, yeah, I, I, we'll have to do some more investigations on that one. But uh, one of the characters from the Attitude Era was then Mark Merrow's wife, Sable. Um, and Vince definitely pushed her to places where I, I mean, I don't know why Mark allowed her to do what he, he did at the time. But then again, that was a different Mark Marrow. He is a reformed character now. I don't think he would have allowed that at this point if, if he'd have been the way he is now. He's, I believe he's a born again Christian. Um, but Sable definitely went, took everything to the hilt. Now she ended up, we found out through the documentary, placing a lawsuit against Vince and the WWE. I believe it was for sexual harassment or something of that nature. Um, but then she comes demeaning right, something with demeaning, demeaning. Okay. Yeah. But then she comes right back into the exact same role she was in your era in the two yeah. and three. Now this time she's married to Brock Lesnar. Yes. Uh, who, who also plays a pivotal role now in what's happening with Vince today. Um, any interactions that you had with Sable or around Vince at the time? I mean, what were they like? What was Sable like personally? Did you have any interactions with her? Just a hello and a goodbye. That was it. I had no interactions and no reason to have interactions with Sable. I had Miss, you know, in 2003, I moved to Miss Jackie and uh, finished my career out with her as a stylist. You know, uh, I'm not much on gossip, mm -hmm. I don't like gossip. You know, I, I'm under the rule of believe nothing what you hear, half of what you see. So uh, my job, it was a job to me. Mm -hmm. And I attacked my job with fervent energy. Yeah. Fervent energy. Yeah. What, what was your opinion, though, on the angles that Vince did do with Sable? I mean, again, from a legal perspective. Well, yeah, that that that's a stretch. Now you're going to have to get um, permission. Basically, uh, you can't just say I'm going to do that angle and just do it. Mm. You know, there's federal guidelines. I don't care what you're in. Mm. There are federal guidelines for equal opportunity appointment. Mm. You know, employment. You know, we'll get into that later because I know you got a question about that. But you know, there's got to be consent. Mm -hmm. somewhere you know you just can't tell somebody if they don't want to do it they shouldn't be allowed to do it well it's a private company you might get fired mm -hmm. you know so um there has to be discussions you know meetings mm -hmm. well what will make you do it yeah. you know this is where we're going and they negotiate yeah contracts are always negotiated right to right. where each person feels they're getting what they need and they proceed. Mm -hmm. Now, could do you think he could have gotten away with certain things because he brings people in as independent contractors? Is there a is there a, a dark zone there where you can get away with extra, other things because you're an independent contractor rather than a direct? Well, individual? actually, no. It doesn't gain make you gain anything. It hinders you because okay. he could fire you without reason. Okay. You know, in, in the workforce with unemployment and stuff like that. He was, if he, if a person is actually an employee, mm -hmm. you know, you have progressive discipline. You've got to follow, you know, a verbal warning, written warning, suspensions, and it all has to be in the same area. You can't go, well, you did this. So you got a verbal here, but you did that. You're going to get a written here. It. No, it has to be among the same habit that, um, you're not doing correctly, whatever the employer wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So it's very in depth. Mm -hmm. So that's why everybody's an independent contractor. Mm -hmm. So we have less rights than an employee. Yeah. You know, per the state and per the federal government. Okay. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Um, now in that angle, in that moment, in the Netflix documentary, where they're talking about Sable and Vince, we see Stephanie McMahon, and she's doing a bit where she says, I can't believe you hired her back after she sued our company. Now, obviously, I think there was a little bit of resentment there. I think that was a little bit of reality bleeding with fantasy there. But one of the, things, the lines, blurring the lines, blurring the lines, they did quite well. But one of yes. the things that struck me so much, Rico, was how Shane McMahon was painted 
as such a nice I mean he really did like I felt sorry for Shane at the end of this because it seemed like the young boy who always wanted his dad's attention the one who turned out the most sense sensitive of all of them who cared about the guys and this and that um but yet he's nowhere in the picture now the company was taken away from him Stephanie and Triple H are at the helm and you know <laughs> you, at you, the you, helm is that a pun yes at the helm that's a pun uh at the <laughs> helm of helmsley but uh yeah mm. i yeah it's so strange in fact last night just a quick segue um triple h and Shawn michaels came out and opened the premiere of nxt and it was just odd seeing them together because it, it brought back memories of dx but now these two guys are actually running the show it's very bizarre all these like 25 years later but um but yeah, so uh, but now we know a little bit about Shane and you because we you said that Shane wasn't really favorable of you. But after watching this, what do you what do you think about Shane? Do you feel for him? He was a businessman and he got passed over. You know, I, I'm sure there's more to that story for him leaving. Mm -hmm. And then by the time Vince called him back, don't forget he was the first one to mention the UFC merger. Yeah. Yeah. Way back. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden Vince does it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your son was right way back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I got to give props to Shane to, because he had the insight mm -hmm. before anybody else did. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I don't, it's not that I don't like Shane. I, I have the impression he didn't like me mm -hmm. due to his statements. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's a chip off the old block. You know, he sees the future and stuff like that, but he scorned because he was passed over yeah. and given because he never wanted, as the documentary says, he never wanted Triple H as his son-in-law or brother-in-law, mm -mm. you know? Yeah. And then Vince kind of coded it and went, somebody like Triple H, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. it really was Triple H, Yeah, you know? So I, I, I'm glad he came back as Shane O'Mac. Mm -hmm. uh people loved him i love what he did because he did everything extreme mm -hmm. you know not really a good technical wrestler but for extreme mm -hmm. you know and tough mm -hmm. like when he when kurt angle kept trying to suplex him or german suplex him through the glass and didn't go that's hurts and then he lands on his head yeah i saw that and yeah. then he says to kurt, kurt what are you some kind of blank you yeah. can't put me through a window. Oh yeah. I'll show you. Boom. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. You yeah. know, so Sean, uh, Sean, Shane loves the business. Like his father loves the business. The show has got to go on. Yeah. You know, you've got this high point in your match and it doesn't work the first time. Usually when, like if you try to jump on the ropes or something and, and it goofs, mm -hmm. you make up for it. You never try that same stunt again. Okay. You never do it. Yeah. You know, but Shane told him to do it again. Yep. Yep. He and did. he did it. Shane was incredible. I said, looking back, you know, he was fairly young at the time um, when he came out with the corporate ministry and he was Vince's sidekick. But that was another part that this, the last four, three episodes covered when Shane first comes out with his dad, the creation of Mr. McMahon, when it all began in the late nineties there off mm -hmm. of Steve Austin, actually, it was Steve Austin that spurred the creation of Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon rather, but it yeah. was incredible to see Shane's um, ability to talk on the mic, like mm -hmm. you said, to train himself to be that tough in the ring. And he really was a standout character of the last 20 years. Um, yeah. It's going to be interesting for us to watch. I sent you an image the other day. Um, I think I sent it to you. If I didn't, I will send it to you. It was Shane McMahon standing in between Matt and Nick Jackson, the young bucks of AEW. Yeah. And we know that Shane has been in talks or actually met Tony Khan recently. Um, so it's going to be interesting to watch that space uh, to see if Shane does pop back up somewhere. Of course, there's also speculation that Vince... I mean, it's far fetched, but he has enough money that may put together another organization somewhere else. Under well, you got to have competition. See, yeah. Vince, I don't think he saw that, you know, and he became the only name. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not healthy. No, that's a monopoly. Yeah. You got to have competition where people can go here, 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 yeah. you know, give people a choice. Yeah. 
So him buying WCW and not continuing it as WCW, I I don't think was good. No. You know, it was but, a very it was a very sad day. Yeah, I was watching that live too when Shane O'Mac came out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, "What?" Because WCW was calling me because I didn't think I was getting called up fast enough. Okay, you know, I'm I'm going to be forty years old. I got to do something. Yeah, I got to get on a brand, make my mark. So, had you called WCW or did they? I was in contacts with them prior to them calling me up on on the ninety day release thing. Okay. You know, I was talking, saying, listen, uh, if this doesn't pan out, I want to come over there. Wow. Okay. And then I'm watching on TV and then Shane O'Mac walks out because yeah. it was done in three days. Yeah. Yeah. Quick. quick. You know, really quick. Who are you dealing with at the time in WCW? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, that Too many years ago. Too many chair shots. Yeah. Too many tables. Yeah. But that's very interesting, though. So, yeah, you could have. Yeah. yeah. WCW closing was a sad day. I remember watching it in disbelief like you. I couldn't believe it. But, yeah, it was it was strange because the WWE needs comp it needed competition. It was a sad day when that happened. It's like, OK, they did pick up the slack. And I think WWE did have a burst with the ruthless, ruthless aggression era, which was kind of like a medley of WCW and WWE. That's what it yeah. looked like for about five or six years. I wish but they put John Cena as the face yeah. of Ruthless Aggression. Yeah. Because I remember when I wrestled against him, uh, Taz saying, John has that Ruthless Aggression. Mm -hmm. And we were going back. They were trying to get us out of the attitude area, not just PG, P PG-14, but PG. Mm -hmm. So we're because now he's getting sponsors. He's already gone public. You know, he's trying to make it for everybody. Yeah. So definitely he Definitely couldn't do that after he went public with Attitude Era. Yeah. That would have turned off sponsors. Then he gets Bud Light. He gets all these sponsors, mm -hmm. you know, because he's on, you know, brand name television. Yeah, yeah. He, he went big. But you at the time um, in uh, where was I going to go with this? Uh, Shane McMahon, Stephanie McMahon. Now, you you said Stephanie was, uh, you know cordial with you stephanie was yeah. not with you and linda as well you said yes so linda uh popped up in an angle the thing with trish stratus Vincent yeah and trish that now i don't remember that i don't remember seeing that um but when i saw it in the documentary i was shocked um the part where uh linda gets rolled out and she's supposed to be intoxicated or something drugged over drugged over medicated over medicated and Vince, you know, uh, kisses Trish and stuff like that. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Now, first of all, if that was your wife, if you were married and you you had an actress Trish Stratus with you, would you have done something like that in front of your wife? I mean, <laughs> I know Probably I not not in front of my wife. I wouldn't have. I mean, but actors do it in movies all the time. Yeah, you know they have to be in love scenes and stuff like that, and everybody's human. So, uh, doesn't mean you continue it after they say cut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, to be have my wife as a character in what's going on, and then I'm kissing another woman, I probably couldn't have done it. No, no, it was very, it was very strange to watch. Um, yeah, I don't know. If Even when I watched it here, I was like. Yeah, when he took the happy Valentine's Day, put the roses, and she's staring off into space, and yeah. he rips the roses from her lap and then gives them to Trish, and they walk out. Yeah, I was like, "Ooh, that's hard." Yeah, that's harsh. I mean, but I don't know if Linda and Vince had already been separated at that point because I've heard that they've been separated for years. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just, I guess, they're just married. There's so much wealth involved that uh, probably would have caused a disaster to go through with a divorce. I imagine. Yeah. Well, opinion. in my opinion, uh, Linda put up with a lot. Yeah. Sable, Trish, and, you know, and the, the she probably knew about the affairs because they went public. Mm -hmm. So I think Linda put up with a lot. Yeah. Yeah. She's, I mean, it was good to see her. She still looks pretty healthy. You know, they were approaching 80 now, both of them. So it was nice to see that. But yeah, it did kind of stunned me there a little bit yeah but uh, linda looks a lot better for 80 vince looked like he's been rode hard put away wet 
Yeah. Yeah. He he has changed so much, hasn't he, Rico? Yeah. Oh, I when he came out with that mustache. <laughs> oh, I I I was like porno. I just, yeah. yeah, yeah. At that porno mustache and then yeah. dyed eyebrows. I went, ooh. Yeah. Not a good look. Yeah, he doesn't look uh the dyed eyebrows didn't look too great. But yeah, he he aged dramatically in the past 10 years. Um well, because of everything that's come at him. He's had to fight everything, tooth and nail. Yeah. That that wears on you. Yeah. Stress is is the silent killer of everybody. Mm -hmm. Stress. Yep. Yeah, no, it's true. We've got to manage that. And let's take a moment, Rico, and talk to viewers about that because I know for myself, I deal with uh, sometimes on occasion, I feel overwhelmed, uh, a little bit of anxiety and things like that. I know you do as well. Uh, yeah. So maybe, you know, share with some of the audience, maybe some of the things, the techniques that you would do to try and cut, especially when you were wrestling before coming out to, to a huge crowd. Oh, uh, Larry Zonka saw it on gladiators. The wrestlers saw it. I would sit and I would rock back and forth in a chair. It could be a regular folding chair and I would just rock back and forth and then close my eyes and go over the match to make sure, you know, if this went wrong, what would I do? You know, if that went wrong, what do I do? You know, I thought of the match in every possible angle. That's how I prepared myself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm a thinker. I, you know, if a problem comes at me, I have to attack it. So I think a problem is a circle. I start on one end and I keep going around and around and around and around and around mm -hmm. until I figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, rest. I was always nervous before every match, mm -hmm. you know, because I always wanted to put out the best. Yeah. And so me, it's it's rocking. Okay. Yeah. And that gets me through everything. Yeah. And I use it as a positive tool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for me i think going back to childhood i was telling my wife the other day i used to jump in one spot so I, if i was watching tv or whatever if it was pro wrestling i would jump you know when i was like seven or eight years old um, now for me what i use is uh, walking so i'll go for long walks uh typically two yeah maybe three four days a week i'll take a long walk in the evening when it's quiet when it's dark so it's quiet on the streets and that kind of gives me that time to, you know, be there, pray, pray to God and just be still in, in peace. Right. It's just right. important to have that. And especially if you are, I mean, life is hectic right now, viewers. I mean, you all know that uh, times are tough. People are working more than they used to, but it is important to find those moments for your mind and your body, because those are the important tools you need to work. Without right. those, you can't work. So never right. work on top of your health. It's not not yeah. the way to go. Uh, what I do now, I mean, my job, I'm not law in law anymore, but I'm an insurance investigator, and I do the same thing as a police officer does, except write tickets and make arrests. So I work out after my 12-hour shift. Mm -hmm. So I go right to the gym, put an hour and 30 minutes in, and then by the time I get home, I am so relaxed, take a shower, up into bed, sleep like a baby. Yep. Yep. But I use the gym. Yep. You know, um, that's what helps me get through now. Yep. Exercise is so vitally important. We, 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 we releases all the endorphins. Releases releases endorphins. Them. We will yep. be obviously next week when our next regularly scheduled programming, we will be back with some more fitness uh, conversations next week, but keeping back to the Vince McMahon special here. Uh, Vince McMahon did make a comment. There was one scene that really struck me, Rico. It leapt off the screen at me. He said he has three minds, three voices mm. in his head, which I found a little bit disturbing, number one. Now, I know we all hear an inner voice because that's how we plan our days. Oh, remember to do this or whatever. You may hear it audibly, but it, it's there. But he mm. said three brains. And he was talking to this individual, a man who now we believe might have been Bruce Pritchard. I believe it's him. And he said, uh, what's going on in your second brain? And he said, fun, but sexual, sex. And it struck me because in light of all the allegations and everything that's been thrown at him, uh, I believe it was Vince, Vince Russo who said in that special interview he did a few days ago that he basically just incriminated himself because he just he stated clearly there 
that he has that on the brain. And I thought it was kind of odd because he was talking to a to a man at the time, but yeah, he's right. still he's still thinking about it at that moment. Um was he again, I know you didn't speak with him directly or but was he known to be a very, you know, like boisterous sexual kind of guy? I mean, backstage were there, you know, was he like that or was he well of- he was boisterous, but huh. I never saw him in a, as a sexual way. He was just confident, cocky, and let you know he ran the company. Okay. Uh confidence. Yeah. Extraordinaire. He had an overabundance of confidence. Yeah. What did you think about that comment? Again, being in law, being mm-hmm. a student of people's psychology and personality in a way through law, what did you think about that statement with the three brains? Well, uh, I think we got to look into Vince and how he thinks because the person across from him, which I think is Bruce Pritchard, asking him the questions, he felt comfortable and did a 40 and slip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking about business and this and that and that, but I'm also on this side. While I'm talking to you, I'm thinking about sex. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's not multitasking. That's, you know, you just admitted that you're thinking on your next project yeah or whatever your next victim if you want to call it that Mm -hmm. you know i don't know i'm not in his head nor do i want to be no but yeah i thought it was a 40 and slip Mm -hmm. very interesting uh the one the one thing that he should not have said he actually said and they actually published it it was very strange um uh going on to something a little bit more serious here concussions because oh they did bring that up with Christopher Nowinski and uh, I'll let you fill in the viewers on Chris, because I know you worked with him during that. I worked with, yeah, we were, we tag team together, Chris. uh, He wasn't as prominent with CTE until later. Um, As you know, Chris Benoit was one of my mentors. Mm -hmm. I worked with him for about five years and um, he was never mad. Never as people call it, roid rage. He never had it. Mm -hmm. He'd always was calm. Even when he had the right to be mad, he never got mad. Mm -hmm. So um, I go to him, Chris Jericho, Fit Finley, Dean Malenko, you know, and I go to Chris Benoit. Listen, I got this move and I show him, uh, where should I put that in my match? He goes, he always chew on coffee, plastic coffee sticks. Put it here. Thank you. And then I put it there and it oh it work. Yeah. You know, uh the Chris Benoit that did that that act, I never I I mean, like I said, I'm a good judge of character. I never saw that coming. Mm-hmm. You know, I've I mean by that time I met his wife, Daniel, which was a spitting image of him. Yeah, you know, I, I no hints, no signals that he would do a murder suicide mm-hmm. yeah Came you know unexpected. and then the, yeah but they called it roid rage mm-hmm. thank god for chris Nowinski because he understood it was more than road rage, road rage. Mm-hmm. you know continual injury to the head mm-hmm. concussions 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 and you know uh the back of the head is the softest mm-hmm. front of the head's the hardest so if you keep bouncing your head off the mat or getting hit in the back of the head with a chair, you develop something called CTE, which is Nowinski's is great at that study. And um, I think it was the CTE that snapped him because uh, he got Chris's father's permission to examine Christopher Benoit's brain. Mm-hmm. And you have to shoot a brown dye into the brain to see how much tau protein is actually in your brain. Mm -hmm. You know, take the slices and go in a microscope. Chris Benoit had a ton of tau protein. The only problem is you can't test for it prior to death. The -hmm. subject has to be deceased before you can test the brain. Yeah. Same thing with Aaron Hernandez, professional football player, head trauma, head trauma, head trauma. And he has a helmet. I, I've never seen a wrestler wear a helmet. Mm-mm. You know, we're we're getting hit by steel chairs, going through tables, 
body slammed and sometimes the body slams don't go the right way or suplexes yeah. and you hit your head or get pile drive like Owen did stone cold mm-hmm. boom on top of the head and then he broke his neck yeah you know um what I did like about the documentary is Vince was against it at first, but he let Chris come in and educate the wrestlers. And as far as I know, there's no concussion protocol in WWE, but there is a concussion protocol for the NFL. And it doesn't have to be the refs on the field. There's spotters in the booths that watch each player. And if he acts a little funny, gets up a little funny, they call that number down to the referee and they go in the blue tent. Mm-hmm. And they decide whether he's concussed or not. And if he is concussed, he can't play till he get he he's released from protocol. Okay. There's none of that for wrestlers. Yeah. No, it's it's a shame because it was such a sudden turn of events. Like you said, the Chris Chris Benoit that you knew backstage was not this guy. So what you're saying is with continual uh concussions to the brain the mind can literally become essentially depraved. It it just, there's no reason left in it. No, it it becomes damaged. Just the damage. The tau, T-A-U, tau protein just gathers in the head. Mm -hmm. And when they shoot that dye in there, it turns brown. Mm -hmm. And you can see how much brown was in Chris Benoit's head. Yeah. They said that his, his brain was like the brain of someone far beyond his years also. Yeah. So, but he it, still had the physical c- capability of doing what he did. Yeah. It's you just, know? it's, 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 it's so strange. Um, you know, and again, Rico, have you been concussed? I'm sure I have. Well, I know I've been concussed. Yeah. I mean, even prior to wrestling yeah. gladiators, I was a stunt man. I mm-hmm. played Batman. I was in the Conan show. Mm-hmm. I went to France and competed in their competition. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I've been concussed. Would you advise any athlete, if they receive a bump to the head during any of their performances, to make sure they go to the doctor? Or do you think it's that's too extreme? Uh, are there certain signs and symptoms that they should watch out yeah, for? Yeah, there's, there's signs and symptoms. Uh, you're off balance. Uh, you feel nauseous and there's no reason why you feel nauseous. Uh, you can't focus, you know, stuff like that. And even not hospital day, if you get a head injury, they encourage you not to go to sleep right away. Cause you might not wake up. Yeah. You know, you need to be observed. If you're going to go to sleep, you need to be observed. Yeah. Sometimes people with head injuries are admitted in the hospital and closely watched for at least 24 hours, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, like I said, and they could tell in your pupils if you've been concussed. Okay. One eye won't react the same as the other eye, you know, because you put a light in it, it shrinks. Mm-hmm. You take the eye away, it expands the pupil. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, but you'll know because you'll feel this feeling of you got your bell rung. That's yeah. the common statement. Ding, you know, you got your bell rung. Well, I would go get checked. Yeah. Now I'm surprised. You know? Now, did they do that in WWE? Just shine a light in anyone's eyes? At any no, point? not that I know of. Wow. Back then. I'm sure now things have changed. Hopefully they Oh, have. I hopefully they changed because Chris Chris is a pioneer in this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, well, they said in the documentary, no more headshot head chair shots mm-hmm. because of the CTE. Mm-hmm. So Vince changed that and outlawed pile drivers before that because Kurt got one and then Austin got one from a pile driver. Huh. Austin got one from an Owen Hart. Yeah, he did. How, how uh, coincidental was that? Yep. SummerSlam 97. Uh, but Chris Nowitzki now is a neuroscientist. He is the CEO at Boston University's CTE Center, coincidentally. So a complete change from his pro wrestling uh, persona. Yeah. He's, he is now, you know, hitting up this uh, tremendous work. I, I think I am going to reach out to Chris and see if I can get him to be a special guest on one of our shows in the upcoming, uh, in the near future. I yeah. Think well, promising. the reason why he started it, because he got concussed and yep. and wasn't recognized. Yep. And he's like, wait a minute, there's something to this. Yeah. Yeah. He he concussed and that ended his career. He'd only started, what, about three or four years? Yeah. It was his wrestling career was cut Maybe short. that long, but I think it was shorter. But yeah. he came out, you know, as the Harvard graduate. Mm-hmm. You know, all that stuff. He was yeah. smarter than everybody. Kind of the playoff of uh, the genius. Yeah. 
the genius or, or a Dean Douglas, Shane Douglas character. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Um, now, now this is an interesting topic, Rico, because you have a background in this and you and I talked about this off camera and I think it might be one of our longer segments today. Um, oh, before we get into that, yeah, yeah. see how I'm dressed ring wear. Yes. I've got a mini me. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. I that, look just like that, me. That is so cool, Rico. And it's got the original WWF tag team title belts right there. Yep. Wow. When when was that released? I, that was my first action figure. Gosh, man. It's in good condition. Great condition. Yeah. So that he takes be, a bath every day. He takes a bath every day. <laughs> but that's what I look like, see? Yep. Same. Same elbow pad, same tight. And I got the I got the pad and I got the belt downstairs. Gosh, yeah. We'll have to bring the belt up next week. Next yeah. week we'll bring the belt up. Share some but belt. okay, let's get on. I think I know where you're, whoop, where you're going with this with yes. the next title. Um yes. yes, the next segment here is allegations of uh sexual abuse, uh rape in some circumstances. And you wanted to speak on this because you are in law enforcement. So you've I was. Yeah, I was. You was. You were, sorry. You were in law enforcement. It's in your blood. It's in your mind. So uh, share with the audience now what you shared with me uh, off camera. Well, um, I've actually responded to an actual rape case. Mm -hmm. And rape is very violent. And it is very humiliating for the female. Uh, it takes her dignity away. And they, um, when, if you arrive there first as a, as a male officer, don't forget, she's just been attacked by a male. The last thing she wants to do is be comforted by a male. So we immediately get a female officer out there to take care of her. And we have chaplains and uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, females. And when they get them from the scene and they get all the evidence and stuff like that, she's brought back to the station and she's interviewed by a female detective because it brings her guard down because if if you've just been raped by a guy and you want a guy you don't want a guy next to you going well what happened did you ask for it you know questions that they have to ask coming from a male yeah. would be just offensive so mm -hmm. you have a female mm -hmm. do it and they get them in touch with rape crisis it's it's, it's a process to help them uh, deal with what terrible, horrible act just occurred to them. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that's what rape is. It's a horrible act, you know, and it's violent. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just as violent as manslaughter or robbery. Okay. You know, the person, but in rape, the person doesn't die all the time. Mm -hmm. There are some rapes that have occurred and ended up being a homicide. But, Watching these specials, and I'm not, I'm not minimizing the complaints. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, I, me as an officer looking at it, I didn't see any of the rape qualities that I saw while I was a professional. Mm -hmm. You know, these people, um, for whatever reason, um, and they can't say, okay, it wasn't consensual. But something made you have sex with Vince or whatever mm -hmm. because you weren't brought out, beat up. The cops weren't come, mm -hmm. you know, weren't summoned. But there had to have been some agreement, whether it was consensual or not. You're trying to get job, trying to further your career, mm -hmm. you know, where you, you felt you had to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to think of that, too, because there's always three sides to a story. This side, that side, and right here is the truth. Yeah. And only Vince and that woman and the Lord above knows what's happened because mm -hmm. the Lord knows people's heart. Mm -hmm. I, I just, because I've spoken to rape victims, there's tears in their eyes, there's uh, anger, aggression, especially when they go to court and, they, and this female has to relive that rape case because we're prosecuting. Mm -hmm. The rapist. Yeah. And I'm telling uh, you, you see females just fall apart. 
Mm-hmm. And the prosecution has to protect them. Some, a lot of times you had to go time out mm-hmm. so the victim can compose themselves, but they have to tell what happened, which is also humiliating in front of 14 people in the jury. Yeah. yeah. 12 jurors and two alternates have to hear this mm-hmm. and who's ever in the courtroom. So now she's humiliated again. Mm-hmm. You know, there's many stages to a, a rape case and, I'm sorry, I haven't I haven't seen that in this documentary. Mm-hmm. I have not, and rape is such a hard word. When you say rape, mm-hmm. people think of what I just said. Yeah, violence, strength. Uh, the man is just taking. Mm-hmm. You know, I I didn't I didn't hear any of them say, mm-hmm. you know, they were forced or slapped or, you know, I heard deals. Yeah. So what you're saying what is I'm, yeah. So what you're saying is is you know, there is to some degree a little bit of what you would call in your line of work profiling of yes. of a uh, of an individual who has been through a horrific. I think you're I think you're right, though, because when someone has dealt with a horrific trauma, even if they're talking about it, they relive it. It's in their eyes. It's yeah. in their body language. They're not just, well, you know, or and especially if something had happened, you're not going to go and work for that individual again. You want to stay far away from that individual as possible yeah. if he really did, quote unquote, I'm using the word rape. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that he got sexual favors. I will get in. I'll get into that in a second. Mm-hmm. But you if you really got raped by somebody, you're not going to want to be around him. Right. Yeah. You know, because he did something that violated you, mm-hmm. you know, and degraded you, humiliated you, took your uh took your dignity away yeah you know and you couldn't overpower this gentleman that's a rape Mm -hmm. now this other stuff uh oh vince paid three million four million for these people to shut up Mm -hmm. well they took his money yeah and then they still came out Mm -hmm. yeah and then got more money wait a minute i've got a problem with that yeah you know uh, if you were trying to advance your career and one of them did, mm-hmm. one was getting paid 100,000 a year. And after this consensual, unconsensual sex session, whatever it was, now she gets 200,000 a year. Wait a minute. Yeah. Something's yeah. going on. Something's not stirring the Kool-Aid. Okay. In my, in my view as a law enforcement officer, mm-hmm. uh, there's deals being made. Maybe Vince was very persuasive, promised things, and then they didn't get fulfilled. And then the scorned woman, what is that saying? Hell has no fury as a woman scorn. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, it, to me, if you took the hush money, mm-hmm. shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, and if you didn't take the hush money, speak up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. There are laws, state laws and federal laws that cover an employer employee on numerous. If Vince was really make advances at these people, they could go to the federal government without retaliation and say, this is a hostile work environment. I've been sexually harassed and the federal government will investigate. They can do that. That's their protection. Tony Atlas. Oh, he grabbed my thing. You go to the federal government. Mm-hmm. I've been sexually harassed. I, I was touched uninvited. Mm-hmm. He could have got Pat Patterson legally, mm-hmm. you know, and with, with, no, would, with no retaliation. You're saying, no, if you retaliate, the government comes back on the company again. Okay. So there's no retaliation. So when, when the guy asked Tony, well, who'd you go to? I couldn't go to nobody. Yes, you could. You could have gone to the federal government and said, this is the hostile work environment. I got this guy grabbing my thing. I don't want it. It's not invited nor solicited. The federal government would take care of it. So, so Rico, let's let you've, you've touched on something there that can help a lot of people right now. So break this down then so that someone who may be in this position right now or wherever, whenever or wherever they're watching this. So what is the step? So they're working, let's say somebody working for a big company like Vince and okay. this is happening to them and they think, 
that if they tell anybody, that's it, they're done. Their retirement's over, everything's finished. So explain the steps exactly, because when you say federal government, I'm like, okay, well, how do we get to the federal government to make the complaint in the first place? So I'll, I'll give you the floor. I think it's the EEOC. I think that's what they call it. Equal Opportunity Employment Office Organization. Okay. I think that's that's the acronym for it. Yeah, you just go down the federal any federal building because all capitals and big cities have a federal building. Because I used to be a part time United States Marshal. What haven't you been, Rico? Uh, I've never dived out of a perfectly good plane. Okay, there you go. I've never parachuted. <laughs> I almost yeah. went down in a plane. Oh wow, you did? When was yeah. it? When I was bodyguarding. That's another story. Okay. We'll, we'll get to it later. We'll get to that in another episode. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you, you can go file with the federal government. And when they start their investigation, that employer cannot retaliate or like put you in a worse position, worse days off. Cause then you go file retaliation and then he gets fined again. Okay. You know, uh, hostile work environment, or you got a supervisor hitting on you and it's unwanted. That's a violation mm -hmm. of the federal law. Supervisors can't hit on the help. Yeah. Now, if it's consensual, okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not okay in the company. Uh, there's an old saying, don't yeah. dip your pen in the company's ink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really you know, so you're asking for trouble there because it might go great for a while, but then if it falls out, now you two work together and he's your supervisor. Yeah. yeah. Or she's your supervisor. It goes both ways. Yep. Very true. Okay? Yeah. So, you know, and then you get the government involved and they are, they do a full investigation, mm -hmm. you know? So if these people were being sexually harassed, hostile work environment, all that stuff, they just got to report it. There's another way to report it. But what you're saying though, as well, though, is if, if money is, is given and accepted, then, you know, there's, maybe in some way uh, a gray matter that that was consensual because now you've accepted an offer. So the money is the remedy to whatever, you know, um, trauma you suffered. So alleged. that alleged suffer. Now it's over. It's done. You've taken the money. You've done should it. Be. Or, should be. Or like you were saying before, and again, I want to make it clear, we're not tr we're not defending anybody or we're not saying this person's wrong or right. We're just trying to analyze something from an intellectual point of view. Right. So if somebody accepts this, this is happening to them, but they continue on and they keep collecting their paycheck and or their paycheck increases, they've tantamount admitted, uh, uh, consented to this pretty much. Bottom line. Yeah, basically. OK. But, they, but, you know, uh, they're forced to do something maybe they don't want to do, mm -hmm. but they do it mm -hmm. to further their career or get more money or whatever the promises are made. I wasn't around, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I have actually seen rape victims, and none of these women look like actual rape victims. Yeah. yeah. They don't tell their story like they've been raped. Right. They may have been finagled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now. Okay. But if, if, Vince says, I'm giving you $4 million to shut up. Okay, I'll shut up. Mm -hmm. They take the $4 million, and then after they go through it or whatever, then they bring it public. Yeah. And put him under the microscope again. And then the board goes, you paid $4 million to four different women? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. You can't do that on your own. Yeah. You know? And now he has to answer for charges because now the woman, for whatever reason, didn't do the, didn't honor her hush money right yeah which wasn't chump change yeah it's a lot of money yeah heck of a lot of money they so he paid for his mistake yeah and now he's paying for it again you yeah. can't do that in law enforcement that's called double jeopardy yeah like if you get tried for a crime you're found not guilty and something new comes up you can't get tried for that same crime yeah it's unconstitutional yeah, I believe there was a film that came out that depicted that very thing. I mean, it was the title. It was called Double Jeopardy. Double Jeopardy. Where we learned about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, certainly, Sable, when she went back to the company, didn't look like she'd been phased at all. Uh, she just returned exactly the way she left. So I don't know what that was about. But it's kind of funny that they ended up working together again, because now what's also in interesting is Brock Lesnar is implicated in 
this latest series of accusations, which I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around because I'm not there. I'm watching it like everybody else is an outsider. And I'm just trying to think logically, why would Vince have um, had to have used a woman as a pawn to get wrestlers to come back to the company when, and, and let me just say this, when these guys have already been around the block, if you can read between the lines, enough times the it's almost like, well, why would that entice them anymore? They already have the money. They've already done this. Now, you know, I think Brock's approaching 50. You know, it's like, what what would the what would the notion behind that be to use a woman as a pawn to get guys to come back? I mean, do you do you see much validity in this? I mean, I don't know. Do you? Obviously, he did it because he confessed to it. Mm -hmm. And Vince dangled the carrot, you know, put a carrot in front of his face. Sign a contract, you'll get this. Yeah. That's where the trafficking comes in. Okay. He promised somebody else or promised that he Brock would be satisfied by some woman. Mm -hmm. To sign the contract. Hmm. Okay, now that's illegal. Okay. You can't, that's called sex trafficking. Okay. okay, that is totally illegal. That's criminal. Yeah. You, I mean, you don't go to the EEOC for that. You you go to the cops for that. But 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 Rico, here's one thing I would say. They say that there's text messages, tons of text messages. Why would Vince have been that um naive? to text this i mean you think with all these smarts that he has i'm not defending him i'm not saying it's a good thing at all right i'm just saying like what how long has he been untouchable how many cases has he beaten mm -hmm. yeah. you know i in my whole 15 year career i never caught a smart crook i always caught the dumb ones because mm -hmm. they mess up mm -hmm. eventually you keep doing something long enough you're going to get caught. So if we were to analyze Vince psychologically, much like P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, mm -hmm. um, they they get themselves into such a hype that they believe themselves to be like a god. And at that point, nothing matters anymore. Um, no, they think they're untouchable, invincible. Their feet come off the ground. And if they don't have people around them, bring them back down. But people are groupies. Mm -hmm. and they just oh yeah yeah they're yes men mm -hmm. you know um, Muhammad Ali had a guy mm -hmm. all his job was is a you the greatest you the greatest you the greatest and when Ali was jogging his job was tell Ali all the time he was the greatest the greatest the greatest Yeah. and this guy was around all the time mm -hmm. but that was his job so Ali could understand it and uh, be the greatest mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali was you know uh, and he stood by his faith mm -hmm. hats off to that man yeah. He's, he, I don't have nothing against the Vietnam people mm -hmm. this is my faith mm -hmm. and he stood by it paid for it but he came back mm -hmm. you know yeah. Eisen with the rape case when the woman went to his room and but he actually went to jail I did. I've never understood that trial. I, I don't know. Something maybe wasn't revealed to us that was revealed to the jury. I never understood that. There's a lot of strange stuff going on. Rico, your your camera. You, know, you got a kid who came from. Rico, can you hear me? Your camera froze. Huh? Your camera froze. You froze? froze. Yeah, you're frozen on the screen. You're back now. Yeah, I can hear. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Can you see I, me? I can see you now. It's still frozen. It's in and out. At least Are we good? You, you, your sound is good, but there's a little delay between ah. the two of us. I'm waving my hands. Okay. Yeah, you're still a little... Can you bit, see it? You're still frozen on our screen here. We can hear you. You're coming in and out. I'm not sure if it's an internet connection issue that's happened. Um but you're you're still there. I mean, we can still hear hear you. Um, 
You still there? You're frozen now. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm going to try. And, yeah, I know. I'm going to try and fix it. Okay. And while you're trying to fix that, Rico, um, I'll, I'll continue on with the conversation there. Um, yeah. Um, oh, Rico's jumped off. I'm sure he'll be back on in a second. So just bear with us in these, uh, these technical issues we're dealing with here. Rico, How about now? you back on? Okay, now you're back on. It's 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 still a little bit blurry. Yeah, can you see me? Yeah, we can see you, but it's it's still a little bit blurry. Not sure what happened there. It could be a. Uh, I don't understand. Internet. I got five G network here. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, something came on the screen. That's why I put my glasses on, but it disappeared. Yeah, hopefully it will come back in. Can you hear me? Okay. Can hear you? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So yeah, one of the things is uh uh All right, we, we can hmm? yeah. What was that, Rico? Rico, can you hear me? I said don't need to see me, just need to hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so one of the things was uh Cat Williams came on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp earlier this year. And he made a bold statement saying that in 2024, a lot of these big personalities were going to get in trouble. And so far, his predictions are coming true, uh, especially with Puff Daddy. We don't know who else is going to be implicated in that one. Um, you know, Vince McMahon, I believe the trial has not started yet. They're still investigating Vince McMahon. But I'm sure if it, you know, when it goes to trial, a well, lot of this is going to be the worst. This is going to be the worst trial he's faced because it's actually sex trafficking. Yeah. You know, he's he's he is taking women and yeah, against their will and offering them them to another person for gain. Mm -hmm. He's I I don't know if he's going to escape this one. The steroid one. Yeah, he escaped yeah. Uh this other stuff. He escaped I, this one. I don't think he's going to escape. Yeah, I don't care what legal team he has or how much money unless he buys off the jury. Yeah. But. I'm not going to say he's going to do that, but you know, that that's heavy, heavy charges, sex yeah. trafficking. Cause I did a couple of sex trafficking rings here with Asian women. You know, they were put in like four or five houses that had connecting doors and stuff like that. And cabs would drop them off and limos would drop them off. Yeah. And I said, Oh yeah. Yeah. And then the driver would get a kickback and they'd go into these places where women were kidnapped from their original destination and brought in to America as sex slaves. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you know, were, and you were, that's you, horrible. You were involved. In, I am so glad you were involved in shutting that down. Busting sex trafficking rings. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had, I had two or three yeah. that I've shut down. I mean, not that myself in junction with the County Sheriff and federal government, my internet connection says it's unstable. That's what's going on. Yeah, they said it's unstable. So, uh, yeah, I've I've been. I think I've helped in my 15 years with um, uh, two or three busts okay. of sex trafficking, where women were brought here against their will. Well, thank so, you. And I know what those people look like. You know, I see their faces mm -hmm. when when we rescue them. I, I see how frightened they are how timid uh they don't want to be touched mm -hmm. by a male figure mm -hmm. because they've been abused by a male figure yeah. you know and in a in in a business like that you don't know if it's violent uh guy, guys have and girls have you know strange um sexual desires mm -hmm. You know, some like to hit women, some like to do this, to, you know, it's terrible for this poor subject who are usually young. Mm -hmm. Some are under the age of 21, some are over, mm -hmm. you know, the younger ones go for bigger prices. Yeah. You know, cool. and it's just disgusting when you see uh, pedophiles doing that. And I've been at the U.S. Marshals doing trials where pedophiles are looking at 10 year old kids. Yeah, it's disgusting. And I have to look away because the defense or the prosecution has to show it mm -hmm. on the screen. Here mm -hmm. I am, this tough guy, and I'm like this because mm -hmm. I can't look at the screen. 
because yeah. I'll jump up and I'll beat the hell out of the defendant myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, a- it's just, how could you do that? I'm, I'm judge, jury, and executioner. Mm-hmm. I want to take your head off. Yeah. You better hope there's another deputy next to me because you're going to all of a sudden have an accident down a set of stairs. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. You know, you, you, you have, and cause they, they get a search warrant and they take their computer and all these photos and stuff are disgusting. Mm-hmm. Amir, disgusting. Yeah. How yeah. somebody could reach that level of degradation. Mm. Oh, I, I, like I said, in the trial, I couldn't even look at it. I, had to look down, look away until the camera went off. The slides went off because mm-hmm. I know me, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and these women, uh, I had uh, one of the cases was a softball coach mm-hmm. who knew the father who was abusing his daughter Gosh. and the poor woman had to take the stand and she was a wreck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A wreck. And yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, and I can't turn away from that because I can hear it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just wanted to get up and just, just jap slap this guy, yeah. and just, just walk up behind him and just twist his neck off. Yeah, I, I mean, that's how passionate that I'm against crimes against women, children. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just, it, it, it infuriates me. Yeah, it's this it's, it's, and I'm supposed to be unbiased and a law enforcement officer. Yeah. Despicable, disgusting. It's just oh yeah. Let's go let's go to another subject. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. getting yeah, yeah. Animal bumps. Yeah. I'm getting animal bumps. Yep. We'll 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 get off uh, we'll get off that subject now and we'll look towards the future. So the documentary uh ended on a yeah, you know, overall, like we said, it looked like it would have been produced. To make Vince, yeah, you know, to tell the story of the WWE essentially is what it did, and it made Vince this super businessman, yeah. mastermind of pro wrestling. Um, he came across as arrogant at times, but like you said, you know, with ultimate power sometimes comes ultimate corruption. And um, to me, one of the things I yes. did note that Vince McMahon, you know, is not the Vince McMahon that we all remember. That Vince McMahon is gone. Um, he's definitely aged considerably. It yeah. seems to me these mental faculties are not all there like they used to be. Um, or it could just be ultimate corruption. Just now he doesn't care. Exactly. What he, he doesn't care what he says anymore. Or he's done so many things. He's done so many things. He can't keep up with them like he used to. Yeah. You know, he had an answer for everything on the early episodes In the later episodes, like he walked out on this interview. Yeah. As soon as he heard the sex trafficking, yeah. was coming down boop, you didn't see vince anymore gone yep gone you know um because he wasn't ready for it mm-hmm. uh bruce pritchard didn't have the questions and he didn't have the answers mm-hmm. so he disappeared and then he resigns from tko and wwe yep resigns yeah okay that to do that because i'm pretty sure he was pressured to do that by the other top men yeah. saying you know what you gotta go yeah you gotta go yeah so you know uh they don't want that tag with their brand no definitely don't no because then at your event you're gonna have picketers yeah and that's not good for business you know i mean like i said when we're wrestling you want the people to have it you know, Billy and Chuck suck. Rico, you suck. You want that because you're a heel. Yeah. That's that, you know, that's bad publicity you want mm-hmm. in a wrestling world. You don't want it in a in a professional world. No. Especially a sex trafficking. That means you don't you don't respect women. Yeah. No. You know, you, you have to respect everything. You know, especially when you're that high profile. Yeah. It's a very you know, um very bad look, very sad for the wrestling fan who watched it and remembers the Vince McMahon of the nineties. I was just telling my wife when we, Mm -hmm. I said the Vince McMahon I grew up watching was he was clean cut. This was prior to the attitude era. He was a commentator. He was this guy who just looked like, you know, kind of like a nerd in a sense Um, to become this. And I, and I want to state, I want to state this, uh, Rico, because we do want to help people on styling. It is about motivating and inspiring and styling at the same time. Um, 
anybody can take a wrong path in life. And if you keep turning around the wrong corner, yes, eventually you'll be so far. We talk about this like with our faith, Rico, that you've got you know God's path, and the further you go off God's path, the harder it is for you to get back on it. So the the the, the idea is, yeah, don't get off it in the first place. Um, you know, and and if you do find your try not to, try you, not. yeah, if if, if you're off that exit and you feel it, get back on that freeway. Yeah. You know, uh, everybody takes an exit now and then mm -hmm. it's the people who don't realize, you know, you've taken an exit off your path, which is only hinders you. Yep. And you take that exit and then it's the easy way. And then you take the next exit, next exit. And like you said, you're further from the path you're supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. And then you have to struggle to come back to the path that, makes you feel good inside out you're doing good you're you're an asset to a society yeah. not a deficit right you know um i think that's why we have criminals just people just grow up hard uh they're uh abused they're um ignored they're not they're not uh encouraged mm -hmm. so when you can't or you don't know how to deal with that you turn to the easy way. Yeah. Well, these guys like me, you know, I'm part of this group. I'm part of this family. So it's easier to go over there. Mm -hmm. the, the path that God's path is hard. Yeah. And it says it, it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's, you're not just going to be handed things. You're going to go through hills mm -hmm. and you're going to go through valleys. Yeah. You got to get through the valleys standing on the top of the hill. It's easy. Yeah. You know, it's when, it, like in relationships, you got the peaks and you got the lows. Mm -hmm. It's how you handle the lows that make the peaks that much better. Yeah. 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 You Because everybody's your friend when you're on top. Mm -hmm. You know who your true friends are when you're at rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden nobody contacts you. That's not a true friend. Right. They're not there to help encourage you to get you out of your rut, mm -hmm. your slump. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. True friends are there for their friends. Oh, I understand you're going through a rough time. Come on, we can do this. Listen, you know, I'm here for you. Yeah. I got this shoulder. Lean on it. Yeah. If, if this one hurts, go to this one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what, not just Christians, mm -hmm. everybody should have that quality. When they see a friend in need, because you can tell mm -hmm. when somebody's going through a hard time. Mm-hmm. And you step up. Yep. You just do it. And you do it selflessly. Yep. You do it in the agape way. Yeah. Not Philly or Eros way. You do it the agape way. You do it and don't expect anything in return, mm -hmm. but you do it because you love this friend yep. or your mate. Yeah. Your partner. Yeah. It has to be you you can't expect a return. Well, I did this for you, so you got to do this for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, you do it because you care about that person's stability mindset. Uh, you want to get them out of that valley as soon as they can, mm -hmm. you know, get them up that mountain where they start feeling good about themselves again. They feel positive. They feel like they have meaning in life. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's where most of the suicides happen mm -hmm. is they don't go to anybody. And some people are not strong enough to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Which is the first thing they should do yep. is ask for help. Society has judged that going mm -hmm. to a psychologist or psychiatrist or an advisor as weakness. Mm -hmm. No, when you realize you got a problem and you're seeking help, that's a strength. Mm -hmm. That means you are completely understanding what's going on and you know you can't do it by yourself and you seek professional help. Yeah. That's alcohol, drugs, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. If you're strong enough to, to understand, I can't do this on my own. That's courage. Yeah. yeah. That's courage. That's true courage. Yep. Yeah. And so don't be afraid, you know, anybody out there. I've been there. Yep. Yeah. I've been pretty low points in my life. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. Yeah. So, so again, don't be afraid. Yep. You're not weak. Yep. Uh, society's got that wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Just like Rico yeah, said, it's, don't, don't be afraid. It's not weakness, it's strength. Yeah, don't be afraid, no. just as Rico said, you know. Uh, and we also want to encourage all of you, um, you know, to feel part of our community as well. So if you have any particular subjects that you'd like to, for us to discuss, drop them in the comments of these videos. Um, we are on Patreon as well, too. Now. Yeah. So we, we launched Patreon. Um, over there, Rico and I will be doing specials. We'll hopefully be able to start those up in November. So make sure you go over to Patreon, subscribe over there, and you'll get some other benefits. Also, Rico, I'm going to let everybody know right now that we are on the path to expanding this. We will have merchandise available maybe as soon as December. So if you want to wear a T-shirt, if you want some style in your life, okay, okay, look at you'll you'll be able to get some uh, some T-shirts for style in two. Uh, Rico, I think there's a little bit of a delay in my uh, the sound to your end. What? Tell me when you hear me when I stop. I hear you right now. Okay. So okay, you stopped. Okay. I'm I'm right on. I mean, I can hear you. I hope you can hear me in the same time. I was just pointing to the kids. They they want to be on the camera too. <laughs> yeah, the family right behind Rico there, the family of fishes. They are part of our family here. They're always yeah. smiling with us here. Beautiful fish tank there. Rico's kids, you know, he loves those and uh we love them too. Rico, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this episode today. Um can you hear me? Rico? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we'll wrap up this episode. Um, yeah, uh, I can hear you. Okay, Rico, any closing statement for this week for this week's episode? Um, yeah, when you watch that Netflix special, uh, watch it open mindedly. Okay, and I want to say as a disclaimer, we're not minimizing what Vince did. Uh, it was bad to put an employee in that position that she felt she had to uh, perform to get further ahead in the company. But there's other avenues, other avenues you can take. I, I want you to understand that. Really been. Humiliated humiliated, degraded, uh, besmirched. I, I can go on and still get your money and get the problem fit. Vince thinks he can do not just Vince. Anybody can think they can continue to do it as long as they have enough money to pay it off, mm -hmm. to hush it up. So if you have really felt like you have been humiliated, degraded, uh, you know, birched, go if he's found guilty. But you're going to help somebody in the future not have to go through what you went through. Mm -hmm. okay. With these hush money people, the problem stayed dormant and didn't come out till later. Yeah. You know, do something about it to save somebody else. Yeah. If you're ever put in that position, you know, uh, that's how I feel the problem would stop. If the first lady went to the federal government and said, this is what happened, or went to the police and said, this is what happened. I, however many there were, because Vince would have stopped it because he'd have been criminally charged or civilly sued, yeah. but public, yeah. you see, he might have stopped and not got to so many victims yep yep may have stopped and not got to the position he was in either so there's always that to look at too um either way it was it's a very well uh, now as a promoter as a promoter he's in the wrestling business promoting mm -hmm. it's his extracurricular activities that gets him in trouble yeah, it's it's sad, but you know he's a great businessman. Yep, great businessman, but sad how the events you know unfolded. Um, I'm sure there will be more in the coming months. 
Um, but for now, uh, Rico and I want to thank all of our viewers today for checking in, staying with us, even through the technical difficulties. Uh, they will be ironed out next week when we return to regularly scheduled programming. Um, but uh, Rico, uh, do you want to say goodbye to the uh, fans for us this week? Well, you know what my saying is? First, lay the smack down on that subscribe button. Yep. Get more of this. Join Patreon. Get exclusive shows. Because mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about everything. This is not just wrestling. This is current events, men's health, women's health, yep. uh, getting the most out of your later years. Because mm -hmm. I turned 63 yesterday. Oh, October 1st is my birthday. Happy birthday. But I don't go. celebrate it here. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't tell me. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, I don't celebrate it on the first. Okay. I celebrated a week later because of that person that shot up all those innocent people at the country concert from the Mandalay Bay. Oh, and right. there was a lot of uh, charity events and stuff like that. Remembering the fallen mm -hmm. of that. So I don't want to be out yelling happy birthday. And people are going, I lost my father. I lost my daughter, you know, so out of respect, for these people here in Vegas, while I'm here, I do it a week later. Okay. So we're going to do it Friday. We're going to do it this Friday. My son's going to take me to sushi. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll eat for about two and a half hours. You're cheating. The poor sushi chef goes, oh my God, Rico, oh, you eat like killer whale. <laughs> <laughs> one day a week only. Yeah, one day. That's my reward. I do one day a week sushi, but everything else is... Protein and clean. Yeah. Everything's clean. And every other week, I'll go down to the local sports pub mm -hmm. and get one of them giant, juicy, half-pound burgers oh, yeah. and some sweet potato fries. That sounds good. Bro. Yeah. You're making me feel hungry right now. It's almost mm. time here. But next week, next week, in fact, next week, we will touch on how, Rico, you fought your way back. And this is the cliffhanger, everybody. How Rico fought back from a near death illness a few years back. Yeah. How he overcame that. That'll be one of the segments next week. So make sure that you slay the lay the smack down on that subscribe button and come right back here next week. But until then, everybody, this has been a tremendous opportunity to hang out with you. I've had my cup of tea. Rico's had his lemonade. He came back from assisting the folks at Cirque, Cirque du Soleil. What a tremendous. Oh, yeah. Tremendous individual he is. Wow. Day after his birthday. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you on my behalf, Emir, on Rico. Rico, you want to say thank you to everybody? Thank you. And never forget what your mind can conceive, your heart can achieve. Amen. Thank you. Believe it. I mean, you can do anything. Yep. Thank you very much, Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, until next week, take care and keep styling. Keep styling.